Hello! At the start of every year, I like to make a group of classic books that I'm hoping to read over the course of the year. It's kind of like a resolution list made out of books. And uh, since it is 2021, I thought I would select 21 titles that I'm hoping to read. And I chose these books for a number of reasons. Uh, some of the authors, there's a special celebration um, surrounding uh, either their, their birthday or the publication of a certain title. Uh, other of the books are uh, being newly made into films or TV series in 2021, and some of the books are being newly reprinted uh, by different publishers and have new introductions to them that make me want to read them. So even though we feel this pressure sometime that we have to read the classics or we were meant to have read the classics, I very much believe that you should only read a book if you're really enjoying it and getting a lot out of it. And some of these books I, I started at one point, but I think uh, I just wasn't in the right mood or it wasn't the right time in my life, uh, but now I'm hoping to finally get to them and read them. And that's not to say that you shouldn't challenge yourself or read outside your, your comfort zone, uh, but you know, just if we always have this experience as a reader, I think, if you're reading a book and sometimes you'll have read 50 pages and you'll realize, I don't know what's going on, I, I can't really remember anything or, or follow what's happening happening. And so then maybe it's just best to put it aside and come back to it at some other point. Now to start off going way back in time, there is a recent translation of Beowulf by Maria Devana Headley, uh, which was published in the US in 2000, but it's being published here in the UK in March 2021. This was first written in Old English somewhere in the years between 700 and 1000 AD. Scholars aren't exactly sure. It's a great hero epic that's considered one of the foundational texts in all of literature, and this is a new verse translation of the great epic poem, where familiar elements of the story are mixed with an eye towards gender, genre, and history, and mixed with social media slang. Now, coming up to more recent times, uh, January 19th, 2021 is the centenary of Patricia Highsmith's birth. Uh, this is an author that was famously known for writing literary psychological thrillers like Strangers on a Train and the Ripley series and The Price of Salt, uh, which is a novel also known as Carol. And I've never read this author before, but I've always wanted to. And I think a great way to start would be with some of her short stories. And there's a new book of her short stories coming out called Under a Dark Angel's Eye, which is being published by Virago. Uh, and it comes with an introduction by Carmen Maria Machado, uh, which is an author. I really enjoy her, her books and her point of view. And uh, so obviously it includes many of her short stories which have been published before, but it also includes two newly discovered unpublished short stories. So I think that's quite exciting. There's also a centenary celebration for the feminist author Betty Friedan, who was born on February 4th, 1921. And she is credited as sparking the second wave of feminism when her book The Feminine Mystique was published in 1963. And this book uh, challenged the idea of women's roles as homemakers and the assumptions that they were sort of satisfied in this role. Because Frieden conducted a number of interviews with American housewives and found that they were, many were unsatisfied in their roles uh, but weren't able to voice their opinions. Now I became interested in Betty Frieden uh, from watching the recent TV series uh, Mrs. America, which is a really great series that I'd highly recommend. And I just got a copy of this book on audiobook uh, recently, and it's narrated by Parker Posey, uh, so that's really exciting. D. H. Lawrence's novel Women in Love was first published on June 10th, 100 years ago, and this novel is a sequel to his novel The Rainbow, and it follows the Branwyn sisters and their intellectual emotional and romantic relationships uh, through the period of the First World War. And I've had a bit mixed experience reading D.H. Lawrence because I tried to read his novel The Rainbow in the past and I just didn't get very far with it. But I've always felt like this is an author that I'd really enjoy reading if I could just sort of get into his work. So I'm hoping to make a go with this novel. There are a number of really famous authors that are celebrating some big birthdays uh, 
this year, uh, including Marcel Proust, uh, who was born on July 10th, 1871, so 150 years ago. And this is another author that I've always tried to read, but never made much headway with his work. So I started Swan's Way a number of years ago when these new translations of his great epic series looking at uh, the upper class in French society in the, the 1800s. Uh, but yeah, I, it, I struggled slightly because it's very dense uh, going through it and it's quite lyrical and beautifully written and I sort of enjoyed it on an aesthetic level but yeah, it's quite like dense to, to get through. So this has been sitting on my shelf for quite a while along with, you know, this big box set of his series. Uh, so yeah, I'm hoping to make some headway with this as well. Another writer who was born 150 years ago is Stephen Crane, who was born on November 1st, 1871. And so I'd like to reread his novel Maggie, A Girl of the Streets. Now Stephen Crane is a writer that was looking at the complete opposite side of society from what Proust was, because uh, he was looking at the lower classes and working classes and impoverished um, side of society in America in the 1800s. And I remember really enjoying this novel and appreciating it, um, but I don't remember all that much from it because I read it so long ago. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to rereading this. And uh, this also has some other short stories by him uh, from New York life. Going back even further, Gustav Flaubert was born 200 years ago on December 12th, 1821. So I'd like to reread his great novel, Madame Bovary. And this will actually be the third time I've read this novel because I think I first read it about 20 years ago and really enjoyed it. And then I reread it for a book club about 10 years ago and I thought it was just amazing. Uh, his writing is so poignant and lyrical and psychologically insightful, all about the, the downfall of a discontent housewife married to a provincial doctor. And it's such an incredible, beautifully told story. So it's a novel I think I'd like to reread every decade, and I'll probably get even more out of it every time I go back and reread it. Also born 200 years ago was Fyodor Dostoevsky. He was born on October 30th, 1821. So I'd like to reread his novel, The Brothers Karamazov, and this is another novel I read many, many years ago and can't recall the details of too strongly, but I remember really enjoying it and loving the, the writing. So this is a philosophical novel centered around questions of religion and morality, but it's also a drama uh, focusing on patricide or the killing of one's father. So it's quite a thrilling story as well. And I have this great everyman's edition of the novel and I really appreciate the Everyman's editions because they, they come with introductions, uh, quite a lengthy introduction and I don't always read the introduction first to, to classic novels uh, but I really appreciate going back to them if I'm slightly struggling with the, the stories you know so I can get a better context of why this is an important or interesting novel and I also love in the Everyman's editions that they include these uh, chronologies uh, so you can see where this book fits in with the wider context of literature. Another beautiful Everyman's Library edition I got recently is the autobiography of Benvenuto Cellini. So this was a late Renaissance artist uh, in Italy in the 1500s who was a contemporary and who knew Michelangelo and Titian. Uh, so he writes in this book about his interaction with different artists and the artistic scene of that that time, but also about period details uh, around that, that time and the, the history of that era, which is so fascinating and exciting to, to read about. So I think this will be a really interesting personal look at that time period. So I was just a judge in the Costa Book Awards uh, in the first novel category, and the Costa Book Awards was formerly known as the Whitbread Awards. It was founded in 1971, uh, 
Uh, so this year it'll be celebrating its 50th anniversary. So I thought it'd be fun to go back and read the novel, which won the very first award. And that was The Destiny Waltz by Gerda Charles, uh, which is about Jewish life in London in the first half of the 20th century. And this author is seen as one of the great chroniclers of Anglo-Jewish experience. There are a number of books which are being newly adapted into films or TV series. And the first I want to talk about is 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, the great novel which was first published in 1967. And it's been adapted into a three season series by Netflix. And some of the executive producers on this project are Marquez's own son. So you're hoping that it'll be quite faithful, you know, to the, the story and the, the feel of the book. And I loved this novel when I read it back in high school. Uh, it's such a thrilling multi-generational family epic uh, that is so wonderful to read. And it's now considered a foundational text in literature, especially in its use of magical realism. There's also Passing by Nella Larson. Uh, this was first published in 1929. It's been made into a film directed by Rebecca Hall and starring Alexander Skarsgård and Tessa Thompson and Ruth Nega. And so the story is set in Harlem in the 1920s and is about two childhood friends who are reunited and it's about racial passing. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. This is a classic science fiction novel which I've never read before but always wanted to and interestingly it was first written as a radio play in 1978. Uh, I thought it was a novel first but no the, the novel came later so it's being developed by Hulu into a TV series and they've already set two seasons for it. It roughly follows the misadventures of the last surviving man after Earth's demolition. There's also The Power of the Dog by Thomas Savage. Uh, this was first published in 1967. It's been adapted into a film directed by Jane Campion, uh, who's such a great, fascinating director. And it's starring uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and Kirsten Dunst and Jesse Plemons, who's an actor I absolutely love. And the story is about uh, two brothers and business partners of a Montana ranch. Uh, one is a vicious sadist and the other is a very gentle soul. There are a number of books that are being reprinted this year that I'm looking forward to and a really interesting sounding series is being published by Penguin in February uh, called Black Britain Writing Back. So Bernadine Evaristo uh, jointly won the Booker Prize in 2019 and her novel A Girl, Woman, Other has gone on to become a major bestseller and she has written the introduction for a number of these novels and so there are four uh, which I'm really keen on. The first is called The Fat Lady Sings by Jacqueline Roy. This was a novel first published in 2000 and the story is about two women in a London psychiatric ward in the 1990s. One is very loud and audacious and the other is is very quiet and fearful and the novel is about the intersection between race, class and mental health in the UK. The next is called The Incomparable World by S.I. Martin. This was first published in 1988 and it's a fictional reimagining of 1780s London and African-American soldiers who are grappling with their post-war freedom. I think this sounds so fascinating. Without Prejudice by Nicola Williams. This was first published in 1997. It's about a 30-year-old barrister of working-class Caribbean descent uh, who uncovers the dark secrets of London's obscenely rich. Sounds like a really juicy story. And then there is Bernard and the Cloth Monkey by Judith Bryan. This was first published in 1998 and it's about a woman named Anita who returns to her family family home after a very long absence to find that things are quite changed, that her father has died and her mother is missing. And it's the story is about her trying to reform a connection with her sister and from there the family's secrets explosively unravel. The publishers Weidenfeld and Nicholson are bringing out a range that they are calling WNN Essentials. They're books that they feel have stood the test 
test of time. And these come with uh, introductions from a range of really fascinating authors. First being republished in April is a collection called Toddler Hunting and Other Stories by Teiko Kono. And it comes with an introduction by Sayaka Murata. And these stories were first published in the 1960s. And they're meant to show the lives of Japanese women like you've never seen them before as they cast off their traditional roles and follow their wildest desires. Then later in the year, in September, they're republishing Alice Walker's novel Meridian, uh, which was first published in 1976. And it comes with an introduction by Teari Jones. And so this is about a woman that is finding her voice, uh, both political and feminist, in the American South during the Civil Rights Movement. And finally, in October, they are reprinting the novel O Caledonia by Elspeth Barker, uh, which was first published in 1991. And this comes with a new introduction by Maggie O'Farrell. And the novel is a gothic story about an irresistible frizzy haired girl named Janet growing up in Scotland. And I'm really keen to read more gothic literature in 2021. So I think this will be a great one to read in the, the fall and autumn, you know, when it's very atmospheric. Uh, so those are all of the books that I'm going to talk about. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these classics or if you're interested in reading along with me any of these classics and uh, we can have a chat in the comments below. Uh, but also let me know if there are any classics which you are keen to read in the new year. Uh, so I hope you're doing well and reading good things and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.